Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nashley and today's video we are going to be caring for my plants. I'm doing this a little bit differently so let me know how you like it. So I'm starting with my snake plant. I realized that it's probably time to transplant it. It just seems to be outgrowing this little pot it's in so that's what I'm doing. My snake plant is probably one of the most resilient plants I know. And what I started doing was just clipping off any of the leaves that were bending or starting to rot at the root and cleaning it up a little bit to prepare it for the transfer. What I know about my snake plant is that it can live in bright and indirect light, but it can also live in shady corners. It definitely prefers to dry out between each watering, so I water this guy when its soil is dry. I have it in a planter that has drainage holes to prevent root rot um, because root rot can happen to your plant if there's nowhere for the water to leave the container and the water just remains at the bottom where the roots are. The soil that I'm using is just a potting mix soil and I found this one at Lowe's. The rubber tree is one of my favorite plants. The rich green color of its leaves is what drew my eyes to this beauty. My rubber tree has definitely seen better days. It was once full of beautiful oval emerald green leaves. I'm hoping that by repotting it into a bigger pot, it will help this plant thrive once again. This plant can live in bright and indirect light, and it does like its soil to remain wet in between waterings, but do not soak it. I try to water my rubber tree more often, but as you can see, I haven't been keeping up like I should have, so I will be better about that. The ZZ plant. When I tell you that I forgot to water my ZZ plant for weeks, I don't think you would believe me. Look at how green and beautiful it still looks. I'm so grateful. This plant is also one of the most resilient plants I own. I would probably say more resilient than the snake plant, to be honest. They like bright and indirect light, but can also tolerate shady spots because that's actually where I kept mine. I've had it in this pot since I got it and I felt like it was just time to transplant it into a bigger pot so that it can grow and thrive. Such a beautiful plant, but just be careful because it is poisonous to humans and pets. I made this planter not too long ago and it's got some cactuses or cacti <laughs> in, and a succulent and I put it outside because they were dying and they're totally thriving outside. The really tall one grew all of a sudden once I put it outside and it's almost triple the original size. It's crazy. I also have a succulent in here which will never die. That thing has outlived most of my plants. And lastly, the angel wing cactus started to grow and it became too heavy so it kind of fold folded on itself and it's bending so I'm going to try to put a dowel in here to see if I can prop it up and train it to stay upright. I hope I can do that. A girl can only dream I guess. The original thought with the dowel was to try and hold up this really long cactus but the dowel was too short so that's why I switched it up and I used it for the angel wing cactus. You may also have noticed that I am wearing gloves while I'm handling the cacti because they do have thorns and they're sharp so I'm just protecting my hands. I'm also using a little piece of twine to hold up the cacti as it probably won't be able to hold itself up. It's kind of top heavy so I'm just trying to help it out. As you can see here, I'm going to tie this cactus with the twine right onto the hanging part of the planter because it's just the most stable for it. I 
I think that went by too quickly. These are zinnias. I got these seeds for free during a customer appreciation day at Lowe's. That was so sweet. And I'm so excited to watch these babies grow. All right, time to water these plants. For years, I have been using the Super Thrive fertilizer on my plants. I absolutely love this fertilizer as I can see the difference in my plants when I use it. They perk up and they tend to grow faster, which makes me so happy and I'm sure my plants are also very happy. I'm using a large pitcher I had in my house to mix a few drops of this fertilizer into the water. Then I water all of my plants with it. I will use the fertilizer a few times during the year or if I see that a plant needs kind of like a pick-me-up. So here I am just making sure that the soil is thoroughly moistened so that the plants can soak up as much of the water and fertilizer as they need. In my back porch, I also have a Shaker's Prayer Siberian Iris, a Bird of Paradise, I have a Mexican Mint Plant, some pothos I propagated, and this wild monstera that was getting too big for the inside of my home. So I'm just making sure to water and fertilize them as well. The landscaping personnel use weed killers around these plants and ever since they just haven't been doing the same. But I'm working on rehabilitating them and showing them some love to see if they'll grow and thrive again. This is the weeping fig ficus tree. Oh man, this has to be my favorite tree ever. I picked it up specifically for my daughter's nursery because it said that it detoxified the air. Plus it just made the space look so grand because of its stature. This room also gets a lot of bright and indirect light. So this tree thrives in here. Granted, I water it. Like all of my other plants, this one has also seen better days. It's been a few weeks since I last watered it, and you can tell because all of the leaves are falling off of this thing. It is important to remove all of the dead leaves because you don't want your tree to get sick. I'm also pruning the tree as it is now coming over the crib and towards the walls. And not only will this make the tree look better, but it will encourage new growth. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of leaves on the floor and inside of the pot. And because this is my daughter's nursery, I try to be really good about picking up the leaves from the floor because my daughter is really good about finding things on the floor and putting it in her mouth. And I will try to prevent that as best as I can by just picking everything up from the floor and making sure that everything's clean so that not only my daughter won't swallow the leaves from the tree, but it will help the tree not become sick. I will also be watering and fertilizing this ficus tree to make it thrive. Oh man, mealybugs. I left this room for last because I know all of the plants in here have mealybugs. I'm unsure of how they got here, but they're here and I need to get rid of them. I'm doing this room last because I don't want to touch any other plant after I touch these ones until I've changed my clothes and washed my hands in order to avoid spreading them to the other plants. I first noticed them on one of my pothos and it quickly became infested and I guess it just spread to the surrounding plants in here so now I gotta fight them off. And how I'm doing that is using a neem oil solution that consists of one teaspoon of neem oil, half a teaspoon of liquid soap, and four cups of water. I then split that into smaller spray bottles and I keep them around the house to spray on all of my plants, just in case. My money tree has a few visible mealybugs and I have seen a few of its leaves yellow and fall off. It had grown so much up until now, so I hope to have these mealybugs gone soon so that it can continue to grow. The plant loves bright and indirect light as well. And here's a little rain ASMR. The Florida weather is crazy. One minute it's sunny and then the next is raining. 
Anyway, this is the plant that started it all. You can see all of the mealybugs on it. That's so nasty. So what I'll be doing with this one is bringing it into my tub so that I can rinse off the leaves as best as I can, spray lots of neem oil on it, and then wipe away any visible mealybugs. It didn't take a crazy long time. I would say maybe about 10 to 15 minutes to do the whole entire plant. And the goal is to try to do this a few times a week if possible, until all of the mealybugs are gone. A tip I have for you is that once you're done dealing with the mealybugs and these plants, I would change clothes and wash your hands really well or take a shower and put on different clothes because the mealybugs can jump onto your clothing and they can transfer to other plants in this way so just be sure that you do all of those things after you've dealt with mealybugs and that's why i strategically planned to deal with these plants towards the end of my day that way i wouldn't have any bugs transferring to other plants After repotting and watering and fertilizing my plants, this is where their homes are and how they're looking. I usually see a big difference in the next few days after watering and feeding. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you found it informational. Subscribe to my channel and turn on those post notifications so that you are notified every time I post a new video. Also, comment down below if you learned something new. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!